What's up guys, welcome back to Fisher Hex, appreciate you stopping in. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing a different version of a DIY algae scrubber. Now I'm still gonna go with the waterfall type, but I am going to do a different type of plumbing style just in case you guys do not wanna connect it to your overflow pipe like I did in the previous build. Now a quick recap on the previous build, basically what I did is I teed off the overflow pipe returning to the sump and basically added a ball valve on the main overflow that allowed me to dial down the flow, sending more flow uh, through the algae scrubber. So basically I didn't need any extra pumps, didn't really need to add anything extra besides that T and of course building the algae scrubber. Now in this one, I'm going to be connecting it to a utility pump, basically the same pump that I use in my frag tanks. It's approximately 1200 gallons worth of flow. I am going to add a Fosband 150 uh, ball valve that basically comes with a whole kit there. And I'm gonna add that into the main line so I can adjust the overall flow going to the algae scrubber. Now the total cost in materials was approximately $22 and that was not including the pump. And the total time to build and install was about an hour and 45 minutes. So you guys might be asking yourself, why am I building an algae scrubber for the 125 gallon reef when I have an active refugium? Now, over the last several months, my macroalgae, basically the Calerpa and the Chato have just stopped growing or at least slowed down to the point where I don't notice it as often and I'm not really pulling anything out of the sump. Now, I'm still having nitrate and phosphate levels in my tank because I do feed pretty heavily to keep the tang aggression down and to keep everybody fat and healthy. But... The thing is, is that I'm not growing any macroalgae. I'm still doing my bi-weekly water changes, but yet I still have uh, a decent amount of nitrates and phosphates, nothing that's out of the ordinary or of any concern, but I want to be able to remove those in a better way. So I figured I'd go ahead and try out this different version of a DIY algae scrubber with the same type of light and see what kind of difference I get uh, between the two systems. And of course the bio load is definitely different between the frag tank and the main display. So I will be interested to see uh, how it actually responds. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the build. Now, what I'm doing here is just setting up the input for the water. Now, what I'm doing is I'm using a T and I'm getting it down to a half inch, just adding a half inch coupling there. That way I can remove the algae scrubber without having to take out the pump. Now, basically what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and add an end cap to one side of the T, which will then uh, slip into that little thing that I showed you earlier that will hold up the algae scrubber. And then basically the rest of the flow will go down and go uh, through the algae scrubber screen itself. As you can see, the three quarter inch PVC with the end cap fits perfectly inside this holder. Now basically I'm gonna mount that on one side of the stand and then mount the other one to the other side and basically allows me to slip in the pipe and just kind of holds up the algae scrubber without any uh, worry of it slipping out. Here is the removal of the algae scrubber so you can see how it fits in there. Now my clip for my cable is just in the way. I did remove it so it didn't get caught on there, but uh, as you can see, it worked out pretty well and it fits perfectly. Once everything was cut to size and test fitted, it was time to go ahead and build the algae scrubber. Now, just like in the previous build, I'm using my square here to make a straight line with a marker, which then I will use the Dremel tool to cut out. Now, as you can see, there are two marks on each side of that pipe. Now, what I did is I'm, I went ahead and I laid the algae scrubber on top of the sump, and then I put those marks there to indicate where the screen should be, so it went straight down into the sump and did get caught on the side of the tank. So just make sure you have everything lined up before you make any cuts. Now when it comes to the Dremel tool, just make sure you have eye protection. And this time around, I went ahead and got a mask to cover my mouth and nose, uh, particularly my nose because I ended up getting shavings of PVC up there last time. And you know, that wasn't very fun. Now when it comes to the bit that I'm using, it's just a wooden one from Home Depot, picked it up for a couple bucks, as I mentioned before. And uh, basically it's just big enough to get down inside the PVC. And of course uh, you go ahead and shave it out and make it wide enough to fit the mesh. Now, just like the previous build, I'm going to be using the knitting mesh from Joanne Fabrics, simply going to insert it into the slot that I just dremeled out, and then we're going to go ahead and mark it to size and cut it. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is insert it about a quarter of an inch before I zip tie it in place. When it comes to zip tying, I definitely recommend you at least do three different positions on the screen. I have seen builds where they just put two, one on each side, and then the middle section of the screen starts uh, slowly coming out depending on how far you have it up inside the PVC. So it's just better to go ahead and add three, two on each side, and then one in the middle. Now once I had the screen in place, it was time to go ahead and PVC glue everything together. Just make sure you test fit it again and make sure you make the proper marks to ensure that everything is lined up. The last thing you wanna do is build this and then put the screen in crooked and it doesn't flow the way it should. Now once this was done, it was time to rough up the mesh like I did in the previous build and I simply used my diamond drill bit again. 
but this time around, once I was done using the drill bit, I figured I'd go ahead and try something new. So I used my Dremel tool, which I do not have on video here. It was like a spur of the moment kind of thing. And it actually worked out quite well. I definitely have deeper uh, grooves inside the mesh. So we'll see if that makes a difference on how the algae actually attaches and grows to the screen. The next thing I did is just went ahead and add the lighting. And then I also put in the same bulb that I had in the frag room. It has the red and the blue LEDs. Now I did pick this up on eBay. I am looking for another light that has the uh, cool whites along with the red and the blue. Now there is some debate on if the blue really helps with the algae scrubber. So we'll see how this turns out. I am going to try a couple different lights to see what kind of results that I get. As you can see, the pump just sits underneath the algae scrubber. Now the downside is it's probably recirculating some of the same water that it just pumped through, but honestly, I don't really think that's gonna be a big deal, nor do I think it's going to impact the overall performance. As I mentioned in the previous build, I was gonna go ahead and do some research and let you guys know how long you should be running your lights for on the scrubber. Now from the forums and checking out different articles, a lot of people are running them between 12 and 18 hours a day, of course, having some downtime. And most people can agree that you don't want to have it running 24 hours a day because algae does need to have a break. It does need time to release CO2. And uh, so most people, like I said, are running between 12 and 18 hours a day. I'm going to go ahead and keep both of my systems running at 18 hours, basically come on at 6 p.m. and turn off at noon. And uh, we'll see how that works out. And again, I'll let you guys know and give you an update on how it all uh, ends up growing. Well, guys, that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I try to keep it short and to the point as I usually do. If you guys have any questions, feel free to put it in the comment section or contact me directly. If you liked the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, feel free to give it a thumbs down. I appreciate those too. And if you like the content that I provide for this community, feel free to subscribe for more videos. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.